This is uh, Patrick Hoban. He just won ARG uh, Circuit Series Charlotte with his Mermail deck. Uh, just list off the deck. Alright, uh, it's pretty different, I guess. Um, the Mermail Engine, I played two Megalos. Honestly, wanted to play one, but I just like didn't try it. Yep. And so I, I, I just ended up making the safe choice with two, but I did side one out a lot. And three Teos, three Lindy, three Gun. Um, gun is really just like the focal point of the deck. Like every play revolves around just recycling Gun and then gaining advantage off that. Uh, and to go with that, I played the three Pike and then two. Um, Whatever that is. Turge? Yeah, Turge, that's the one. Uh, just because, like, you can do, like, really, really simple plays where you'll have, like, uh, Turge and Graveyard, and then this and this in hand, and you just, like, summon, discard, and then you add uh, Marksman to your hand. Yep. And then uh, Gun gets this back, and then discards the Marksman, and then adds the Gun back, and the Marksman destroys, and then you just make a rake for it. Which, like, this is a really big power play, and it takes almost no cards and no setup to do it. So Turge. it's just really, really strong. I thought. I thought it was weird seeing Turds because I, d I didn't see it in the older Mermail decks as much. Yeah. But it um, seems to be really good now. Yeah, so uh, I honestly wanted to play three, but oh, wow. I just didn't want to have it in my opening hand that often. Mm -hmm. So I ended up just playing the two. Um, then I played Tidal, which, I mean, Tidal is really good. It's like a, it's a plus one like every single turn, and most decks can't deal with that. Then I played the two marksmen mm -hmm. and one dragoons. I didn't play infantry at all, actually. Um, That's something somebody brought up. Yeah, the reason I didn't do that is because mermails are like a combo deck, and everything you do involves having two cards. And infantry and marksmen they just like simplify the game state. So you like rush down to get as few cards as possible, and combo decks aren't very good in those situations. So I wanted to like try and get away from that. All right. So just didn't play it. And then I played two Aqua Spirits. I didn't, I didn't play the Oshia for the combo, but I just thought with like the additional uh, rank four, um, like focus of the deck, I guess. Yep. The Aqua Spirit would still just be really strong. It was fine. Uh, and then I played one Controller and one Undyne. Um, I only played one of each just because. Pretty much as like a searchable way to get title. I was gonna play Foolish Burial as like almost a second title, but I just decided that because I could search this off Pike and the entire deck searches Pike essentially, that I could if I played just one, then I could have access to title at pretty much any time I wanted. And this gives you access to Leo, which is really really strong. That uh, card is really yeah. There's good. so few outs of Leo. I saw you play it. Uh... In one of your future matches, I was just like, what is that card? Oh, it's really good. Yeah, Leo is insane. Uh, three upstarts. These are the nice spells I played. You gotta play them. Yeah. I played three sphere. And I didn't play squall. Um, but I did, I played three reckless. Uh, it's not that I think reckless is, like, necessary in every deck, but I think in combo decks, it just... It gives you, like, the extra cards you need to, like, be able to make really powerful plays. And, uh, I mean, I think Mermos are just best as a combo deck, so I thought they were really good in here. But and the reason I stopped playing with Hieratics is because Hieratics had a lot of cards that were bad to draw to an established field. Like, Hieratics had to play Reckless, they had to play Seal, and, like, a lot of them played Card Card, and a lot of them played Call of the Haunted as well. And so, just when you added that many cards together, like, you would draw them in inopportune times a lot. So, I ended up dropping the deck uh, to play this because it didn't have the same problem. But that's ultimately why I didn't play Squall. It's just because it was like another one of those cards that I wouldn't want to draw to an established field. And I thought Reckless was more important just because I could draw it at any point. If I draw multiples, it's just auto win. Um, and then it's chainable, so I just thought, like, overall, it just seemed like a better choice. And then, I played, like, a lot of defensive cards. Um, I know, like, a lot of Mermails just don't play any, but I don't think it's, like, a very good strategy to, like, go into a tournament without playing very much defense. Like, it just doesn't seem like a reliable strategy. So I played, I think I played seven total, yeah. So I played one Torrential, and then two Phoenix Chains. Phoenix Chain was just, like, I don't think Phoenix Chain's, like, particularly good. It's just, like, the, uh kind of 
okay against everything, so I don't know. It was, it was decent. There are better options, I'd certainly consider those, but it's kind of the concession to the rest of the meta, I guess. Um, two Regeki Breaks. I think Regeki Breaks is definitely one of the better traps because uh, a lot of traps like Warning and stuff like that, they're not good when they have an established field, and Regeki Breaks good when I have a field, Regeki Breaks good when they have a field, it doesn't matter. And then uh, you can use it in this deck really well just because you have like the gun, the controller, the title. Like There are a lot of good things with this card, so it, it seems like this deck could take advantage of uh, the discarding more effectively than most decks could. And then while I didn't play Warning, I did still play uh, Two Emptiness just because... Like, I really just wanted to play no cards that were bad against established fields, but I decided that if I was going to play any of them at all, I wanted to play a card that would just uh, guarantee me the game. I didn't want a warning a tum and then su them summon back dragons. Yep. So I just decided that, like, it would be better to just play a card that would outright win me the game if I was going to play a bad card, or a card that wasn't necessarily optimal. Absolutely. So, and I have a question. Yep. Uh, you have a lot of... Uh, you have a lot of uh, traps that remain face up, and you just run a lot of traps in general. How did you feel about full house being played? Um, I think that I know uh, Dalton and a lot of his friends were main decking it. I, I think they cited that out against me. I think it was mostly for the fire mirror, but yep. <laughs> they could have got me with it too. I don't That's know. That's what I thought, but I was disagreed with. I, thought, I think they did cite it out. I don't know. Like you have a bisphere. Vanities, chain, a lot I guess of face ups. I don't usually like set three face down and then have face yeah, ups that, too. So. That's I don't know. Um, so, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. I'm doing those those are nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one Draco sack, one big eye. I didn't really make big eye. Uh, guys, there's very little rank sevens. You don't like you don't summon rank sevens very often if you don't play any squalls. So yeah, one of these just seemed alright. I, I probably have big eye for like another. I don't even feel like I need another rank seven though. Like I summoned these yeah. a couple times, but really just you don't make rank sevens very often. And then Bahamut. I was surprised I didn't summon them very much either. Diamond Dyer. Dyer's cool because you can like do things like with the sphere and then make that play uh, with the with the pike and the gun and the turge. So you start with a rank four on your field and then you, you can just like overlay into him and then pop their back row and then use your hand. So it's just that that came up several times. And Exciter Knight, I think this card actually just gave me like a significant advantage against Fire because they play all the cards like Tenki and Tensu and all that, where they aren't real cards, but they count towards his total. So if I'm playing a deck that can readily just summon a rank four and all those cards count for it, it doesn't matter like how many other cards they have. If I can just summon this, like it's gonna give me right back in the game. A lot of people said it was gonna be like the death of the Fire Fist deck. Yeah, I, I think this this like definitely was a big advantage against Fire Fist all weekend. And then I played Global Chain just to send the title to the graveyard. Um, and I played 101. And then Crazy Box. The only reason I played Crazy Box is because I found that the games I was losing to higher addicts it was because well, either one I would get OTK'd, or two they would have skill drain and then just drag yep. them. So that was just bigger than everything I played, so I just played Crazy Box uh, as an ounce of that. And then I played Double Dweller. Um, I don't know, it just seems like he would come up the most. You can use it to get Dragoon's effect too. Yeah, exactly. Um, the only rank threes I played were one Alucard and then one Trite, just for the Bahamut. And then for the Synchros, I played Black Rose and Leo. All right. No. Uh, for the side deck, I played three maxis. Uh, it's good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's maxis. It's whatever. Uh, Valor, I, I only side Valor really against spellbooks. I don't side it against like fire. I don't side it against Kirk yet. I just think that this is another card that simplifies the game state a lot, and those decks are just better at it. Like, all those decks, they have, like, Bear, they have Tanky, Wolfwark, uh, Armor, MK2, like, they just have better simplified game states, so I don't want to side cards that put them into a favorable game state. So, I only side this against Bulks. Um, and then Crow, just for higher addicts. I, I'm not sure if I would side this in the mirror. I, I haven't made it too uh, 3 MSG. I only side them to hit cards, like, Soul Drain and Dimensional Fissure. Yep. I don't really side them for much other than that. If those cards didn't exist, I probably wouldn't have them on my side deck. Uh, Dark Hole. Just, uh, Dark Hole. I noticed when I was testing mirrors that 
there were a lot of situations where if they had Dark Hole, then I would just be in an awful position. So decided decided for that. I also decided against Gear Gear because it's good against the set armor. And those are the only decks I decided that against. And bottomless mostly for fire, but it also hits the dragons. And then uh, two divine wrath. Uh, this is mostly for books. I ended up signing one against fire a fair amount of time. And then uh, like one against Gear Gear. So like Divine Wrath is just very solid all around. Um, the last two cards were two Wabaku. And this is mostly for the mirror match and mirror decks because they can OTK you. Or they'll try and OTK you and then when they can't do it, you, you just Wabaku and then like they've committed everything to the field so then you're in a good position. Can you show me what you sided in against the Fire Fist matchup? Against the Fire Fist matchup? Yeah. Uh, the last round I sided these and these one of these. I sided out two emptiness. Uh, those two, I, I, Fire Fist. When I this, I kind of changed my mind on this at the, uh, as the tournament went on. Yep. When I first was playing against Fire Fist, I just didn't side these out, um, just because Title is really big in that matchup and Leo is really big in that matchup. I don't know. I'm, I don't. I don't know if I think this is right yet. But by the time of the finals, I just come to the conclusion that I was going to side both of these out against Fire. I may change my mind. Huh? And then, uh, last card I decided I was a Megalo. I decided I won Megalo a lot. Um, it's just kind of unnecessary. You don't really want to draw it. It's like an all or nothing kind of card. And I could just play, I could just not play those and just play yep. more consistent cards. Yep. Alright. That's the entire deck. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the and congratulations.